Right, new CCNA. What we are going to learn is what we are seeing here. This is a brief uh, note of what we are going to see. The detailed sections are here. Section 1, building simple network. Section 2, establishing internet connection. 3, summary challenges. 4, implementing scalable, medium-sized network. 5, IPv6 introduction. 6, troubleshooting basics in both IPv4 and IPv6. 7, implementing network device security. 8, implementing EIGRP based solution in IPv6. Again, summary challenges in IPv6 for medium scale, medium size network. The troubleshooting. Then scalable OSPF based solution. Eleventh is implementing WAN, wide area network, where we learn a little bit of BGP, a little bit of uh, virtual tunnels. And then network device management. At last, the summary challenges. The labs that you are going to do are too many. So somewhere around 51 labs you will be doing to complete this training. These are the things that we are going to go through. Network fundamentals and building simple LANs. See the fundamentals are very important for uh, any subject whether it is networking or anything. Fundamental. Fundamentals are very important. I have seen some people who learned once upon a time Photon, Lotus. They know everything now. Whatever the new invention in programming language that comes, they already know it. Because it comes from that fundamental. So fundamentals are very important. We are going to learn network fundamentals. Network fundamental includes things like OSI layer, host-to-host -host connectivity, speed, duplex, and so on. And then we'll see how to build a small LAN, a simple LAN. Now when we have a small LAN, how do you provide internet connectivity to that LAN? And how you're going to secure your LAN? And the devices in the LAN, local area network. And a lot of layer 2 technologies like VLAN, trunking, spanning tree. And then if there is an issue with the IP connectivity, from where I need to start the troubleshooting? What is the troubleshooting steps that I need to follow? which comes first and which comes next. You know, all those things are very important. Troubleshooting IP connectivity. And then EIGRP in IPv6 as well as IPv4. OSPF in IPv6 and IPv4. So in WAN, what are all the considerations that we have? Like whenever you talk to WAN, we don't use our public network. We need to do NATing. So NATing comes here, access list comes here. Device management like Telnet, SSH, and so on. Quality of service, virtualization, cloud service, network pro, these are all introduction. Detailed syllabus of this will be there in CCNP and CCIE level. So CCNA has got introduction to almost all big concepts. Now even if it is EIGRP, OSPF, you don't really see the complete knowledge of EIGRP and OSPF here. It looks like complete but when you go to NP and IE you will find there is much more to learn. 
So almost you know introduction to all the networking topics are given in the CCNA. So this is a fundamental course, very important course. When we have this proper, all our remaining higher level courses will be easy. Devices are of various type. Now, network devices of various type. Some devices are meant for local area network. Some devices are for wide area network. What is that wide area network? What is this local area network? The network of the device, the, if the network of the device is same, then it is LAN, local area network. When the networks are different, we call it as wide area network. Internet is wide area network. We have various networks connected grouped together. Wide area network. Whenever we have more than one network, it becomes wide area network. Multiple networks is WAN, wide area network. Single network is LAN, local area network. So, there are some devices which are meant only for LAN. Starting from where? Starting from something called amplifier. Very old device. We don't have this amplifier anymore. This is just to amplify the weak signal. As the data, as the data pass through the media, because of resistance, the signal will become weaker as it travels as it travels for long distance. So what we do is we keep an amplifier to boost the signal so that it can again continue for many more distance. Amplifier is a kind of a booster. It, it boosts the signal, it amplifies the signal so that it can cover long distance. But the problem with amplifier is it amplifies not only the signal it also amplifies the noise that got added during the transfer. We have a computer here, A and B. Between these two computers, let us assume we have 200 meters. But the cable capacity is only 100 meters. capacity. If you send the data only 100 meter, the signal will be very good. After that, the signal will vanish. The total distance is 200 meter, let's say. What we need is, we need to keep an amplifier so that when the signal tries to become weaker, the amplifier will take the weak signal and again boost it. Amplifier is good, but the problem is this. On the path, because of electromagnetic force or some other electric force on the roadside, the transformer and so on, Along with, the no along with the data, noise gets added. Disturbance to the data, that is what noise. That also becomes like a data here. What amplifier does is it even amplifies those noise. So when the receiver receives the data, he is not just receiving what I sent, he is receiving something more like, you know, symbols, 
some different characters which I didn't write. I write a mail for him, but he is not only receiving my mail, in that mail he is seeing some meaningless characters, alphabets, strings, symbols. It is because the noise which got amplified along with my data. So amplifier drawback is it not only amplifies the signal it also amplifies the noise. To overcome this they designed another device which is called as repeater. So repeater overrides the issue. Repeater will not amplify the noise. Repeaters are clever to identify the signal and to amplify only the signal. Repeater regenerates only the signal. It can filter noise. So what is repeater? Repeater regenerates the actual data. They are clever to filter noise. Good. Now whatever I sent, exact message has been received by B. But the problem with the repeater is, you don't have more than two ports. Only two ports. I cannot add the third device. When I have the third computer to connect, which is also around 200 meters, I don't have a port to connect. Only two ports on this box. There is no more than two. Only two ports. So what they did is they they designed a multi-port repeater, in port with the repeater with more number of ports, and they gave the name as hub. Hub is same like repeater, which 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 regenerates only the data, which filters the noise. Difference is more number of ports. Hub has got more number of ports. Now I can connect my third device, fourth device, fifth device. Repeater is good, but the drawback is only two ports. For multiple ports, they designed the motherboard which can carry multiple traffics, more processing capability, and then they introduced more number of ports when the motherboard is capable enough to handle more traffic. Now they need to have ports, they added ports. They come up with the device called Hub. Hub is a multi-port repeater. But there is another drawback with the hub. What is that? Hub uses the bus topology that we learned in our college days. Bus topology. Why we learned those things? Here it is coming. Bus topology means, this is what it means. You got one backbone. It is tapped. And you got multiple devices connected to that backbone. We call this as bus topology. Bus topology. The problem with this bus topology is, let's take it as logical bus, not the physical bus. We don't have physical wire like this, but inside there is a physical, there is a logical wire to which all the ports are connected. The problem with this is, whenever A wants to send something to D, A wants to send something to D. It will send it to this backbone 
in our case it's a logical backbone it goes to everyone b will receive it d will receive it c will receive it so unnecessarily they receive it they process it and they drop it because it's not for them c will also drop it and d only will respond to it so what do we see here hub always broadcast hub always broadcast to everyone if a is talking to b it not only goes to b it goes to everyone it goes to c it goes to d it goes to e it goes to everyone hub always broadcast let's think about a classroom where always everyone shouts learning will not be there class won't go successfully in a classroom there are 10 students and all 10 students are always talking 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 and you cannot control as a teacher you are not supposed to control them that type of an uh, lunatic school teachers are not not supposed to ask them to keep quiet allow the children to talk let them talk only their their knowledge will grow assume that type of school is there and teachers are not supposed to ask them to keep quiet so teachers can only teach somehow managing all these things he, he or she should teach that's all she cannot ask students to keep quiet if that is the case if there are five students or six students okay teacher can manage see you cannot ask them to stop talking but you have to teach if it is five or six students okay teacher will not go to hospital she can manage if you add more students then teacher will become tired very soon and soon she will be in hospital that's all class won't happen there no learning will happen same story here if every device broadcasts all the time and if all the device receives all the packet even though which is not even though it is not not intended for them if all the devices are sent to all and if all the devices are receiving data from all then all will be busy all the time the hub also will be very very busy when you keep when you try adding one more device the hub will lose its temper the hub will start you know uh because of collusion because you always broadcast because everyone always broadcasts too much of collusion and hub cannot serve now there is no bandwidth available for the hub to serve that's the danger of always broadcasting hub always broadcast so number of ports in a hub if you see only eight ports maximum more students you add sooner the hospital the teacher has to go the hub will stop functioning soon so the maximum number of ports that a hub can have according to the industry standard is only 8 no more than 8 you might have seen 3 port 5 port 6 port 8 port network hubs you don't find more than 
so what they do is they to override this issue see nowadays we have in a small department also we have at least 25 device and if you have 10 departments like that you have 250 devices in an organization so you need more number of ports not just eight So hub is not good for our today's requirement. We need something better. So what they did is they designed another device called bridge. Bridge. What this device will do? This device avoids broadcast. This device avoids broadcast. So now the school rule is changed. What is that? Everyone can talk to everyone, but not louder, not broadcast. So in a class, teacher is there. Teacher, Teachers are not supposed to Ask them not to talk, but students are asked not to shout. If Raj want to talk to Ravi, he can go to Ravi only and talk very quietly without disturbing others. If Raj wants to talk to Ram, he can go to Ram straight away and talk quietly without disturbing the next guy. Now you can have more number of students in the class. But what is needed is Ram should know who is Raj. Only then he can go to Raj and talk. Otherwise he has to shout. Because he don't know who is Raj, he wants to say something to Raj. Because he don't know who is Raj, he has to shout. But when he knows who is Raj, who is Ram, who is Ravi, only then he can go silently talk to him directly without disturbing others. So knowing the names of everyone in the class solves the problem. In Hub, we don't see that. Hub never learns the name. What is the name? Name for a computer is MAC address. Computers MAC address are not learned by this hub or repeater or amplifier. They don't learn at all. Because they don't know the names, because they don't know the MAC address, they don't know which computer is where, so they always broadcast. Whereas in the bridge, they learn the MAC address. Let's say one computer is here in port number one and the computer's MAC address is A. And in port number two, there is a MAC address of B computer. Port number 3 MAC address called C. Port number 4 MAC address called D. Now, when A wants to talk to D, initially the switch MAC table, MAC address table is empty because it's a fresh switch. They have not learned any MAC address so far. Now when A wants to communicate to D, what it will do is it will send that packet. Source is A. What is the destination? It is D. We are, we are saying A wants to talk to D. 
Now when this packet approaches the switch, switch immediately will see from where the packet is coming. It is coming from the source called A. So what it does is, it maintains the table saying A MAC address PC is connected to P1. It updates the table and it is looking into the destination. Destination is D. There is no entry about D. There is no entry. Only this time when there is no entry it will broadcast. It will send to everyone. This guy will receive, this guy will receive, this guy will also receive. B and C will ignore. D will accept it and respond. Now when D responds, see now, D is talking back to A. Responding back to A. The source address will be D this time. It is talking back to the sender who is right now destination. Sorry, the source is A. Sorry, what am I saying? Source is D. Right now D is responding. Source is D. Destination is A. See, it's a reply packet. Okay. Now when this frame approaches the port, Again, switch learns the MAC address from the source address. It learns that in P4, there is a MAC address computer called D. It learns. Likewise, when B talks to C, it learns that P2 is connected with the PC's MAC address B. P3 is connected with the PC's MAC address C. Once the learning is done, they will never broadcast. Initially in the classroom, when we started the first day of the class, no one knows about anyone's name. So you need to shout, shout, hey you, listen. We spoke like that. Once we learn the name, we call by name. We know where, who is sitting. We can go straight to him, to his seat, and we can talk to him. We can avoid collusion. We can avoid broadcast. And class will be silent. Teacher can teach better. Not only that, teacher can have now more students. Because you don't broadcast. There is no need of broadcast. Now you see. Second time when A wants to talk to D, packet comes to the switch, it wants to go to D, D is here, D is in P4, so packet goes straight to P4, not as a broadcast. It goes straight to P4. When the written packet goes, it wants to go to A, A is in P1, so it goes straight to P1, not to everyone. So we avoided broadcast because of that there is no collusion or less collusion. Because there is less collusion, more traffic can be handled. So you, it starts supporting more devices. Bridge supports maximum of 25. It has got maximum of 25 ports. So this classroom has got 25 students now. Before it was maximum 8. The reason is, why, why not 100? Why only 25? Why only 25? Why not 100? The problem is, only one teacher. She cannot shout too much. 25 student itself is a big class. Likewise, there is a processor and it has got some limitation. Even though there is less collusion, it can handle only traffic when it comes from 25 devices parallelly same at a time. 
more than that the processor cannot tolerate so bridge has got only one single processor and the operating system cannot manage when more than 25 devices are parallelly communicating that operating system and the processor cannot tolerate that software the operating system software has that limitation so to override this what they did is they come up with another device called switch what is switch switch is also same like bridge very intelligent learns mac table like this switches they don't broadcast they don't broadcast once they learn the mac address they do unicast like like bridge switch is same like bridge everything is same except one thing switch is a hardware based device bridge is a software based device why i say that the software the operating system takes care of all the forwarding learning forwarding traffic learning mac address and so on with the help of one single processor whereas in the switch you have that one processor you have that software also operating system but you also have some hardwares additional hardwares which is also acting like a processor so this hardware chips are connected to the processors processor we call this as application specific integrated circuit asic so they they take the burden of that processor so now because you have lot of small small processors called asic we call switch as the hardware based device bridge is controlled by one software so it's a software based device switch has got more number of hardware components which allows the bri uh, allows the switch to support 100 ports sometime more than that see when we have too many assistants we can handle more job if you are only the one person who has to do job then you will have some limitation you will say hey only this much i can do sorry i cannot do more than this but when you are given with more assistants then now you can take big size of projects more the number of assistant more bigger job you can take same thing switch can support 100 sometime more than that in today's virtualization world switches can support even 1024 ports it keeps growing actually there is no limit there is no limit right so when you have only 1 hours power the amount of pull will be less if you keep adding more number of hours powers more pull will be there so you need not to limit yourself with a, to a tvs 50 add more hours power you can have bullet and fill bullet add more hours power you can have an alto more hours power you can have hammer so single engine but engine hours power is different the switch hours power is different more number of asic chip more number of ports you can have so that's the basic idea now all these devices that we have seen so far they are all lan device they support only single network 
So we have another device which can connect between two different networks or more than one network and that we called as a router. A router helps to communicate between more than one network. I can have one LAN here, another LAN here, switch, computers, these are all 10 network, these are all 20 network, another LAN here, these are all 30 networks, and so on. And we call it as what? Router. This is how we draw, we just put one round and we put like this router. Switches, we just put one rectangle. Switch, hub, route, hub, everything, we put one rectangle. So router is the only device that helps to communicate between multiple networks. There is also a device called firewall. This is called ASA firewall. We draw like this. This can be a layer two or layer three. It can be meaning it can do switching. It can act like a switch plus firewall. It can also act like a router plus firewall. What is this layer 2, layer 3? We'll discuss in the next class. It talks about the OSI layer. Right. So these are all the network devices we have.